Welcome everybody to another podcast, just Josephot Podcast. We're here with Rodolfo, Rodolfo Reese, attorney at law. Thank you for coming by, Rodolfo. How are you today? I'm doing better than I deserve, man. It's been a blessing. And thank you again for the opportunity and for having me on the show. All right. Rudy, 2020, what a year. How has 2020 been for you, Rudy? You know, to me, it's it's been a season of just really getting to know who I am as a person, like building character. And uh, we just had a newborn, my wife and I. So it was kind of it was kind of just mending the family together, getting to know each other in a deeper kind of sense and level. You know, I don't know if you guys are parents watching out there or have a husband or a wife out there, but it's it's those seasons that you get to grow close with your spouse and having a newborn child just brought us together. And this, this pandemic season has allowed us to do that because you know, like everybody knows, stay home. Right. So we kind of been doing that and, you know, blessed with work to be able to allow me to do that for the most part and, and having to go into the office a lot. So that's the kind of season has been for me. You know, I know, I know many people out there have had uh, more unfortunate circumstances and, and things of that nature, but, uh, for me personally, it's been it's been very eventful, man, and, and I'm and I'm glad to, to to have gone through this season because I know out of it is growth, and and that's what we expect from my family. That's what I expect from my wife, and she expects the same from me. So we're we're excited. That's awesome, Rudy. Mister Mister Reese, attorney at law. Why law? You know, from from when I was. A child, man. I used to watch these shows like Law and Order or SVU and stuff like that. And I and I would kind of love the aspect of investigating whether something was real or not, right? Because there are so many things that could play a part into a process like the justice system that ultimately would result in in somebody's life being altered, right? To that extent. So growing up, I always had the desire, like I wanted to do that. We would travel as migrant workers up north and, and, and we we're always living in such poverty. And I think going into law would allow me to not just be able to get wealth, you know, for my family, but it allows me to, to be able to be, be that type of person who can give back to the community because that's the purpose, I believe. That's the purpose of, of being able to get a, a career or something that allows you to generate wealth is to be a blessing back to the community. So that's really why I chose it. And, and man, I'm loving it. I've only been... A license for for about a year really uh 2019 was when i got licensed september 2020 was was my one year mark and i'm loving and i'm enjoying it it's awesome to be able to help your family and even help those beyond that so is it like the way uh attorneys are portrayed on the film and on tv and in law and order or is it completely <laughs> different did you have like a, a shock you know it, it's 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 very similar, but it's also very different. Like there's a lot of things that you see. And I guess we, we need to start with this, right? There, there's so many types of practices that you can do when, when you're an attorney, you can practice criminal defense, or you can do civil, which is like your auto accidents or your slip and falls, or uh, you can do uh, other types of law, like wills or, or real estate or property. So there's just so many aspects of it. But the most common, obviously, that everybody knows is criminal. Right. So when we see these shows, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that that you can do in court that the show show portrays. Other things that you're just like, man, that just it's, it wouldn't happen because there's rules, there's regulations, there's there's cases and stuff like that that would prevent certain things from being presented the way it's presented on the shows. But, you know, those shows are, are so awesome to watch because you get an idea of what's going on. And it's fun. It, for me, it's fun right, to be able to do those things and. And kind of just figure it out, you know, for your clients. So it, it to answer your question, it, it's both. It's a little bit of both, right? So, and okay, so that's a, that's fair and that's reasonable, you know. And you are fairly new to the to the to the practice. You, you, like you said, you it's been about a year since you got sworn in. So, do they make you go through the whole process of having somebody swear you in? It has to be like an official judge, or does it? Or does it have to be somebody else? Or, or what are the parameters in all of that? I mean, that, help me understand. Yeah, so so you do have to get sworn in once. So first, obviously, you got to take the state bar, right? And, and and if you're from different states, every state has its own uh, kind of bar. 
Um, there is there is a uniform bar that uh, most of the states have, but just just to get forward from that, you have to take a test, right? Once you pass that test, you're allowed to get licensed. And once you get your license, because remember, you have to go through this whole process of character and fitness and whether or not you're even able to practice law. There's so many things that go into it. At the end of the day, you do have to swear. You do have, you have to be sworn in. Now, I don't remember the, the actual rule, like word for word, but there are certain people who can actually swear you in. Uh, it can be any attorney, really. It can be a judge uh, that's appointed or a judge that's been elected, kind of like your uh, municipal judges and stuff like that, or your appointed judges where, you know, president or somebody appoints them. And it can also even be a notary. You know, just somebody who, who the state bar has approved to say, you know, you're, you're credible to be able to swear somebody into the practice of law. And, and for me, like what I did is I had, I had actually, I, I got sworn here in my house. I had a judge who I know, uh, Carlos Ortegon, friend, friend of the family, stuff like that, come, come to the house. And we had a party here and he swore me in here and, and it was, it was really awesome. And I, I enjoyed it. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, so it's pretty much, it goes back to what the individual wants or how they want to get sworn in. Uh, but uh, again, respecting all those parameters. Right, right. So you just got to abide, obviously, by what the state bar allows you, who, who the person allows you to get sworn in by or the state bar allows you to get sworn in by. But it's really up to the to the, you know, to the newly licensed attorney who, who they want to get sworn sworn in by. Maybe it's a close family friend or maybe it's attorney in the family who's a friend and they want to get sworn in by them. It's it's so that, that's pretty much how the process works. And like I said, for me, it was a family friend of ours who just happens to be an attorney and a judge. So hey, might, might as well bring them, you know, and then we, like I said, it was enjoyable. Yeah, I think I think the best feeling out of it all was having your family there and, you know, and be proud of you. Because it, for me, like I personally do it not just to meet my own goals and my own desires, but I want to be able to be a blessing to my family, you know, and, and extend once I'm able to be a blessing to my family, I can extend to the community. And, and, and that's just my heart. So it, it was awesome to see that. And I'm glad that they gave us that option to do that, to kind of just get sworn in by, by you know, who, who, who we want to really. So you, you studied at Thurgood Marshall School of Law. That's here in, is that in Texas? That is in Texas. Uh, it's in Houston, Texas, to be exact. Um, that's one of the few schools that offered me a, a, a an opportunity to go to the law school because remember you had, you got to be accepted. Uh, the only reason I went there really is because it's the closest one to home. Well, I don't. That's not really the closest one. Uh, San Antonio has a couple of law schools there, or one at least. Um, but they offered me a, a full ride scholarship at least for the tuition part. Still had to pay for like my housing and stuff like that. So for me, it was like, look, I don't have I don't have money. You know, my parents don't come from well. So as soon as they did that, I was like, okay, that's where we're going. You know, and that's where I went. So, yep, it's in Houston, and, and that's where I spent the last three three years of my life prior to coming back home here to the Rio Grande Valley. So, now, and and what I'm also reading here is that you were valedictorian of your class. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, that that to me that doesn't doesn't mean too much, right? But but you know, I'm I'm thankful that I was able to to be the valedictorian of the class of 2019 there at Thurgood Marshall School of Law and. Hey, to be honest, it's really more like you and your colleagues. They know, right. they know the valedictorian. Yeah. You know, out here in the practice of law, no one's gonna ask you, Did you were you number one in your class or are you the last? <laughs> you, know, it may, you know, once people start figuring it out, you know, it may mean something to them. But at the end of the day, you know, I did graduate valedictorian, and I'm very thankful for that. And I, I really worked my butt off to get there, but. It's all about being licensed. You know, I have many colleagues who are, are sharp lawyers and who didn't graduate valedictorian. Some graduated at the bottom of their classes, but they're phenomenal lawyers. So it's really school and practice are completely different things. So one, it's really once you get your license, your experience starts to grow in the practice. And that's where you, you become who, who you are as an attorney, really. Oh, hold on. Say it one more time for those in the back not listening. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and the reason I say this is because, look, I have I have two two female daughters. Right. At, well, I, would, I would hope that they were that they're females if they're daughters. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have two daughters and uh, one of them, my oldest, she is extremely uh, knowledgeable and very, you know, like savvy and a go getter, a book, a uh, book smart. 
So she got it from her mom. That's what you're saying. And that's what I'm saying. <laughs> 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 but uh she she goes hey dad uh I, i'm number two in the class wow yeah you know and and never wanting never want to tell her you know that doesn't mean anything yeah. but but my argument is always this exactly what you just said it doesn't matter if you're first in the class or if it doesn't matter if you're the last in the class the, mat- the fact of the matter is that you walk the stage you pass your bar and now you're licensed and now they're going to call you an attorney and now they're going to call you a doctor uh so I, I think that's where you were headed with that. Is that, is that true to say? That, that, I mean, you're exactly right. You, you know, uh, we, we have this common kind of like funny joke that we have, you know, the person who, gra- who, guess what they call the person who graduates last from their class? An attorney or a doctor, depending on wherever you go, right? You right. know, obviously with the assumption that you got to pass the test, but the reality is once you get and pass law school or medical school or, what, or whatever graduate program you're in, you're going to be known. You're going to be, I mean, that's going to follow you, right? That's something somebody can't take away from you. I mean, you can take away so many things, you know, your car, your laptop, your phone, but the degree that you invested so much time and work in, no one can ever take that away from you. You know, whether it's a bachelor's degree in associates or a graduate uh, degree, whatever it is, it, it means something, you know, and, and we don't want, we don't want to take away from the light, the livelihood of, you know, you're number one or you're number two. I mean, that's, you invested, like I said, a lot of time. You you sowed a lot of seeds to get you to that point. And if and if I'm honest, the time that I invested helped me in preparation to study the bar, right? Because aside, you start focusing on 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 investing all that time for one goal, and for some, just some aren't able to do it, or some just don't do it. You know, so it it means something to that extent. That at the end of the day, and I, I say that because I'm I'm a hundred percent of a believer that anybody can do it. You set your mind to it, you know, you have your vision and, and you want to attack it intentionally and diligently. And I believe you can get there. You know, so that's, that's, why, I say, like that. that's why I say it like that. <laughs> no, and, and, and I mean, not to make light of the situation and, and you know what, you work your butt off to get to where the point that you were at in order to be called validatory. Not anybody can be called that. However, it, when it and that's all school, like you mentioned, that's yeah. school. But then practice is completely separate because in practice you can be the smartest one, but if you don't know how to communicate with people and right. you don't have that EQ, what we call that emotional intelligence, yeah. man, you're gonna be found yourself finding yourself no not liked, or you know you can't communicate well, or you can't speak to people well. And that's where cases can be won. Is that correct in saying? Am I correct in saying that? Yeah, I mean, I think character plays a lot of it, and, and public speaking and stuff like that. Because at the end of the day, when you're when you're in court, you have to be able to present your case to a jury or even to a judge, depending on you know what type of trial you're getting. But you got to be able to present that. In a, in a fashion where they understand it, right? If, especially if it's a jury where it's, where it's people who don't understand the law maybe as well as, you know, an attorney would or a judge would, that plays a vital role. So, so you're exactly right. I mean, it, it's a whole skill set, right? You got to be able to, to kind of hone in on, on your, your specific specialty, but you, you got to be able to, to, to be open in the sense of it, it, there's so much that plays a role into it. And, and, like you said, public speaking is one. Uh, being book smart is another. Understanding the language is yet another. Uh, being yeah. able to communicate with your peers or or with the jury. That's I mean that. Being able to simplify it. And see, I used I have this saying where if you don't if you can't explain it to somebody, you don't understand it well enough. So when to give you an example, like I they asked me to tutor when I was in law school certain subjects and. In order for me to be able to tutor, I would ask myself, do I understand it well enough? Because I can, man, I, I can lie to you or I can present something to you and make you believe that I know it. But if I'm honest with myself, I would ask myself, do I know this well enough to provide it in a simplified fashion for somebody who doesn't understand it yet so that they can get it too, right? So all of that plays a role, man. And, and, and you got to build it. You got to build on, on certain growth. Growth is the key. You yep. never want to be in a place where you're stagnant or, or where you get comfortable because when you get comfortable, you're not growing anymore. Or, you know, or, or I know it all and I know it all and nobody can tell me 
how to think, yeah. say, or act, right? Right. That, and, that, and that's yet another skill that people have to develop because some people just are either too prideful or just don't want to learn, you know, and, and, right. and that, that alone is, is also, you know, something else that we, we as attorneys need to take into consideration. And not just attorneys, I mean, people in general, in life. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's things, there's topics, there's subjects, there's conversations that you're going to have with your family or your friends. And, and we have to be willing to seek first to be understood. I, I always say this, man. If you first can understand, explain, I'm sorry, then to be understood. If, if you can explain it to a five-year-old and the five-year-old can regurgitate it back to you and oh, yeah. repeat it, then you've done a pretty good job at, at explaining yourself and, and, and making them understand. Because there's... Yeah, I just recently had a guest and we were talking about that. We were talking about memorization and learning. Memorization is like, okay, we're, by the end of the week, I got to memorize certain aspects of this case so that I can present it. But learning is actually, man, you're speaking a language, you're talking to talk, you're walking the walk. And, and it's something that is with you because then you can spit it like, like anything. Right. Uh, and, and the running joke is, man, how Jay, Jay, how do you, how do you remember 007 three, seven, three, five, nine, six, three. Man, I used to want to be Mike Tyson all the time. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> hey, man. So talk to me because the way I found you and the way I came across uh, Rudy Reese, the attorney, was actually through your wife because your wife has something going on called hashtag serial tipper. And I got to see some of those videos. And I started doing some more videos and seeing some more videos. And I was like, I was very impressed by what was happening. People want to do good. Yeah. People want to bless people. Yeah. Because, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but the average individual say, well, they're not doing anything for us. So, you know what? Let us do take the lead, right. you know, because the system is not the system is broken. So, I mean, how did Serial Tipper, how was it born? So, like you said, this is something that my wife just one day came to me and said, you know, I want to I do this. And the way that it happened is uh, apparently there, it, it, was on, it was viral on TikTok. It was this lady, I forget what state she was from, but she started it. So the way it works is she would ask for donations throughout the week. And uh, Friday or Saturday, I guess, whatever the cutoff point was, a after you gathered those funds, then you would go out and tip a waiter or a waitress or a server in, in, in any restaurant, right? Or it could be maybe the pizza man or, or, you know, somebody who has a little snack place, whoever it was. But the goal was to, to gather these funds throughout the week and be able to provide this big tip for somebody who is, was struggling or is struggling or may have been struggling. And we just don't know the circumstance. but to provide a tip through this pandemic, because as we know, businesses closed down, people were losing jobs left and right. So that's where it started. So my wife said, you know, I'm gonna localize it. I'm gonna do it here in the Rio Grande Valley. And she does Hidalgo County, Star County and Willacy County uh, as, as her kind of her goal, her, her vision of, of what she was doing down here. And that's what she does, right? So she collects it throughout the week. People donate through Cash App or Venmo, whatever, whatever the case is, and then she goes and she gives a big tip to these people. Mm -hmm. and, and man, let me tell you, it, it, I really never like to comment on these things because one, it, it's kind of her puppy, right? And the same, I mean, I would talk to my wife about this, but man, some of these comments that people would leave is just kind of like, man, you want to say something, but it's wise that, you know, you just kind of just, just sit back and let their opinions be their opinions, right? Because right. there's so... There was a lot of backlash because, for example, my wife would record the tips and then she would post them on video. And a lot of people were like, why are you going to do something good and then record it for everybody to see? And we well, should do it this way or you should do it that way. And we actually talked about all of this before we even posted the first one. Right. Because right. we knew people were going to backlash. But then we thought, you know, at the end of the day, this isn't our money. You know, this is this is money that comes from donations that people give throughout throughout the week and, and coming from their own pocket, from their own paychecks. I mean, we don't know how they're giving. We would see gifts from 50 cents to the most, we, I think she said it's about a thousand, you know, and, and we did this because we want to be accountable to the people who would give. We want to show them, look, this is where your money is going. And this person who's receiving it, they're on film. And you see the, that's the, the best thing is to see their reactions. Like, wow, like, are you serious? 
And a lot of a lot of the times, what people wouldn't see on camera is, you know, them crying or them just just thank, thanking my wife because people stopped giving tips through this pandemic, or they wouldn't tip as much as they were used to, or they just weren't getting enough crowd in their in their businesses to be able to get the tips that they were used to getting. And mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, you know, this is this is their job. And their job provides for their family. I mean, we don't know if they have kids. We don't know if they have parents they're taking care of. We don't even know if they're making men uh, ends meet on their own. You know, so my wife said, you know, I want to do this. I want to bring hope to the valley. I want to bring hope to these people. And that's what she's been doing. I mean, she's been doing it for, man, almost 40 weeks, I want to say. And we've, we've been really blessed by it. I mean, I know we're just, we like to call ourselves the vehicle, right? We're just, we're just the people who grab the money and take it. But man, we've been blessed to see these people's reactions. And, and at the end of the day, look, I, I tell these people who have opinions about it, if, if you feel there's a better way to do it, you know, go out and do it. And no, do it. No, one, yes. no one is <laughs> oh, man. Making, it, making it the way you think it should be done. Yeah. And, and we just want to continue bringing hope. And, and that's what we continue that's, to do. Because that's we, that's we a beautiful get, message. We didn't want to get away from that vision of bringing hope. There's always going to be naysayers. There's always going to be people who have opinions. And we're, it doesn't matter how much good you're doing in this world or even in this community alone. People are going to disagree at some point. Don't let that stop you from your vision and your goal. Our goal and my wife's real goal, it was, it was her idea and her purpose was to bring hope to the community. And that's what she's doing. And she's continuing it. So I'm excited yeah. about it. I, I I'm, ex it. I'm, ex I'm, I'm getting I'm getting goosebumps right now just, just listening to you. And, <laughs> because, you know, we, we stop and think, and, I, and I've been talking to, to a lot of individuals here on this podcast. And, yeah. you know, it all boils down to, always wanting to do something good, you know, and, and, and finding a common denominator that's a greater purpose and a greater understanding in life and so forth, you know, and, and you're right. You're completely right in regards to there's always going to be naysayers, but you know what I say to them? I mean, <laughs> you don't matter to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, I, I swear to God, because like, if, if, if I, I mean, shoot, if you Google my name, man, like you'll see my mugshot. My 19 year old mugshot right there, first day, right? And it's like, yo, why? You know, why are you so interested in all of that? Like, right. you know, have do people not grow? Do people, you know, stay? Are they do they stay the same person they were once? No, that's that's completely wrong. You know, but it's our it's our opportunity to say, sabes que. Yes, this is what it. This is what happened on that eventful day. However, you know what? Moving forward, we got to move forward. Up. We bless people. We've helped people. We understand people. We make relationships and so forth. And and uh, I'm so glad that you guys aren't paying attention to that negative feedback uh, because you're right. And I tell those people the same thing. The same thing. If you have, uh, if you if you have uh, an opinion on the matter, well, then you go out and do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly it. And I think I think you hit it right on the nail. I mean, it, it's really about, you know, so we also kind of take a step back and think to ourselves, you know, people, people are going through a lot. Yeah. We don't know what people are going through and what causes them to react a certain way. So we're also mindful of that. You know, it, at the end of the day, our goal is to bring hope. And that's what we're doing. And and we, we want it to grow. You know, we want it to continue to grow. And People are going to attack it and that's okay. You know, at the end of the day, we stay focused to that, you know, we're going to be fine. And, you know, I know you brought up, you know, your past and stuff like that, but that's something very important for people to understand too, is, is people are going to make mistakes in life and that's okay. You know, the, the goal is to learn from our mistakes. You know, somebody once told me a wise person learns from their mistakes and an intelligent person learns from the wise person's mistakes. Our goal is to continue growing. That, that's our purpose, right? Our goal in life should be to continue growing and learning because and, we're always going to be learning. Uh, just to give you an example, like in, in, my, in my relationship with my wife, right, in my marriage, man, it's almost like a school to me, right? Because my <laughs> wife has... <laughs> wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Pause, pause, pause. <laughs> is, is she the... Subs wait, hold on. Because I, <laughs> I don't go to school. Is she like the... <laughs> is she a teacher or should or she substitute or she the lunch lady 
<laughs> well, um, we can probably say she's the principal, but but right. <laughs> but really, what I was what I was trying to get at is is you know we're always learning, we're always growing. Our mindsets are going to change, our desires are going to change, our needs and our wants are changing. So it may be early on that you're in elementary learning about something, you know, whatever that subject is. Yeah. And I'm not talking about just math, science, you know, English. I'm talking about in life. There's there's things that you're gonna you're gonna be learning. And maybe in elementary, but then middle school hits and you're learning something different and you got to continue growing and adapting to that because everything changes. Right. And, right. and time, I mean, as we see it, time changes things. I mean, not too long ago, we didn't have cell phones in our hands. I mean, by the time I was born, you know, there were cell phones were already around. Right. And by the time I was able to afford one, you know, they were already around by that time. But I, I say that to say that everything is changing, you know, it, it's growing and, we grow with it and we learn to adapt and we learn from our mistakes. We, we build character through everything that we experience. It teaches us something. And it's our job to ask ourselves, what did we learn? Because, you know, at the end of the day, there are, there are some people that just don't want to change. And they're going to stay in that muddy tire and that's in a stagnant state until they're ready to change. But you know you continue to grow have that desire to continue to grow and learn because life life is coming and life goes by and and our relationships change our mindsets and desires change but <clears throat> as long as we continue growing with it and learning and adapting and, and loving the situations i mean i think we're going to be fine you know but you know and, and to add to that point i would probably add the communication aspect yeah. yes we continue to learn but we also continue having dialogue Right. Because right. communication is very important to continuously learn. And if we're not talking about it, if we're just so glued onto these darn things where, I mean, think about it. Back in the days we had Flappy Bird, right? And oh, Flappy yeah. Bird, you were mm -hmm. doing this number, right? Which I had a very good score, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but then it transitioned into Tinder. Left, right, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and all these applications started picking up on all these things. You know what? People are programmed. Yeah, they're very easily to program. You know what? Let's do this. Let me create this. But if I'm just focused on these analogs and these algorithms or this phone, then, yeah. then I'm shutting out everybody else. And right. I'm not able to communicate with people. And that's the purpose of these podcasts. You know what? We need to talk. We need to converse. Right. And, and, and create these moments of understanding. However, there are topics that make people uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What are some of those topics that, 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 that you've seen in the courtroom that are making people cringe? Well, I mean, you know, I, I really hate to bring, to bring this into our conversation because I don't like to talk about it. But the reality is there's, there's politics in the courtroom. Uh, there's there's Democrats and Republicans and everybody has a different view and opinion about certain matters. Uh, let me let me backtrack because I need I need to kind of tell you guys what it is that I do for work, <clears throat> and that kind of ties into the things that I hear right because every court we have certain courthouses that deal with uh, federal crimes for example or state crimes and then we have immigration courts and stuff like that. So I actually work for the Department of uh, United States Department of Justice, specifically I work for the Office of the Chief Immigration Judge. Disclaimer, I'm not here as a person who's speaking on behalf of my job, right? I'm not speaking here on behalf of, of the Department of Justice or the Office of the Chief Immigration Judge. I'm just gonna kind of tell you what I see, you know, on social media and, and what I hear, you know, from other colleagues and stuff like that. So I work in an immigration, immigration courts, that's what I do, right? So. Obviously, that is a, a key political debate that we, we have ongoing, you know, with our friends and families. And, and it stems obviously from our, our president. Now, whether I agree or disagree with the president is not my topic of conversation, but that's really the, 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 the things that I deal with in a more intimate level with my work. So I hear about it all the time, you know, right. whether what they're doing is right, whether what they're doing is wrong. Uh, what can we change? What should be changed? Will a president change certain things? Will they not change certain things? At the end of the day, and I goes back to what we've been talking about almost this entire podcast, we have to understand what our purpose and goal is for our life, right? Because 
things are going to change. You're, you may have a different president who has a different mindset, a different policy. You might have a president who remains in office for a certain amount of time, but that shouldn't change your goals, shouldn't change your desire, shouldn't change your ability to get to where you want to be in life. What kind of legacy do we want to live, to leave behind, I mean? What kind of legacy do we want to leave? And that, that speaks to being intentional in working towards our personal vision. I'm not saying you can't get help. You know, the community is there to help help us out. Uh, I'm actually a, a fruit of that, right? I couldn't be where I am today without people helping me get there. Whether it's my parents, whether it was my coworkers or other family members or other attorneys in, in the profession. I mean, everybody played a vital role. So these issues that, that we hear in the courtroom, I mean, they're, they're going to be ongoing. I mean, we can, we can talk about, you know, the death penalty or we can talk about immigration or we can talk about uh, drugs or marijuana and stuff. And, and, you know, from five years from now, I mean, who knows? Who knows is going to be the topic? It may be the same topic because people are always going to have opinions about certain things. But at the end of the day, we, need, we just got to stay focused. We got to be true to ourselves and say, look, where do I want to be in life? Well, what do I want to leave behind? Because that's what I got to invest my time in. We were talking about cell phones earlier and social media and all that. We never grow better. We can never be the person we want to be, you know, a more patient person, a more peaceful person, a more giver, if we're investing our time on social media, right? And it's true of all aspects of life. I know that if I invest my time playing video games, for example, I'm not investing my time in my marriage. If I'm investing my time running at the park or going to the gym, and not that that's wrong, but if I'm going there 10 hours a day, for example, I'm, I'm not investing my time into something else that I believe could be growing. You know, investing time with my son or investing time with my wife or investing time in my work. So be very purposeful and be very intentional about where you're investing your time because it's going to matter. If you invest your time on social media talking about politics, everybody's different opinions, that's, that's who you're going to become and everything else in your life is going to be lacking. You know, whatever, whatever it is that, that you're investing your time in, you, we got to be wise. I mean, we, we got we to gotta understand that we're, we can't invest 100% of our time in everything, right? So be, be, be purposeful about where you want to do it. I mean, what do you want to see grow in your life, you know? And then for me, obviously, it's going to be work. It's going to be my wife. It's going to be my son, family time. So. Uh, I'm also a believer of God. So that's where I feel I got to spend my time also, you know, so where do I want to invest my time? And, and, and that's key for me. Right. right. Yeah. You know, you hit on a lot of, a lot of very good points. I mean, there's a lot of high marks that I, that were the synapses in my brain were just going, bing, bing, bing. <laughs> <laughs> but, but ultimately, I mean, you, you make a lot of sense in, re, in the, in the whole part of investing. You know, my, my mother-in-law is one to tell me that, you know, you got to make deposits to nurture these relationships. You can't, be, you can't be withdrawing all the time. You know, you withdraw all the time, you're going to have a negative balance and it's going to be difficult for you to make, to, to catch up to the level where you need to be. Yeah. Um, and, and that goes back to like, you know, hey, how was your day at work? You know, et cetera. Uh, and just the same thing with our kids. Just the other day, I had a breakdown at work, man, and and it, it, the breakdown happened because I lost a buddy of mine due to COVID. Um, I, I received information with a family member uh, being ill. I received information with two other good friends being ill, having cancer as well. Um, so I'm just trying to process this in my mind, and I'm just thinking to myself, okay, what's, Jay, why is this coming to you, you know? Well, I, I had a, I, I had to I knew that I had to go to an individual that yeah. was deep rooted with 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 uh, with firm beliefs, right? And and uh, one of those things that 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 this individual hit on was Jay, yo, this is a blessing for you because you're a strong-willed individual and you have a per, you have a voice, you have you have a lot of ways of how you can reach people, talk to people. A lot of people know who you are. You know, you can use this as an opportunity to spread that message. Yeah. And I said, okay, I get that. He says, but let me ask you this question, man. 
have you called mom have you called dad i said yeah he says hey man just do me one favor man do me one solid i said what's that he says uh every time you go acariciarlos hug them you know just so hey papito hey mamita como estas how are you you don't know we nothing is guaranteed just like you as an attorney you can right you right. cannot guarantee a win for me right that's it that's it same thing in life nothing is guaranteed so we have to value what we got in front of us and make that <clears throat> investment to the things that matter and you hit it you hit it right on the money yeah i mean you're 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 exactly right i mean the things that we deal with you know are not on display i mean who we we actually get to choose what we display to people right but there may be so many things happening in the background that we just don't know right and and that's why it's important i believe to invest our time in, into the right things i mean whether it's having a good friend whether it's having a mentor you know whatever the case may be i mean we're we got to be open and we, we got to be real with ourselves because life like you said life is short <clears throat> it's not guaranteed we don't know if we're, we're even going to have tomorrow. We don't even know if we're going to have, you know, the next 15 minutes. I mean, in this podcast, we just don't know. So it's a matter of wanting to bring hope to people who, who need it because we all need that hope. We all need to feel that sense of peace or that sense of comfort and, right. and growth throughout our lives. And we, we, want, we want to be able to feel like we have a purpose, right? right? Because the most, I believe, the hardest thing for somebody in life is to live an unpurposeful life and because you, you, you don't know why you're here. You don't know why we're, why were we created? Why? I mean, what, is our life just about being born, having a good family, you know, making some money maybe, and then dying? Like, is that, is that what life is really about? You know, ask yourself those questions and, and begin to understand that you have a purpose. You know, we're all created unique individual as unique individuals, for a specific purpose. And it's our job to, to step into that. I mean, and say, okay, I, I understand what my purpose is now. I'm investing my time into it. Let's get it. You know, let's, let's do it. Yeah. You know, whether that's practicing law or that's being a doctor, I believe careers are a tool that we can use to get through that purpose. Right. It's not wow. I, being an attorney doesn't define me. I don't think, you know, I, I don't look at it that way. Uh, I, I believe being in this profession allows me to do things that that ultimately drives me to my purpose right i'm able to do things communicate with people or or get to know people build friendships and relationships that i may not i may not have been able to do so without having this job so uh, these things i mean obviously play a bigger role into what i believe is my purpose and that's our job you know it's living a purposeful life is going to bring you drive, is going to bring you hope, is going to bring you a sense of, I, need, I want to do something. I'm not just here as waste, or I'm not just here to, to you know, pass away eventually, you know? I, will, I, have, to, I have to ask this question because- I Over, mean, yeah. Who is your NFL team? <laughs> uh, you know, <clears throat> well, I'm from the real Grand Valley. You know, I was born in the 90s. You know, back in the 90s, it was all about them Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> you know what? You have no purpose in life. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 yeah, I, I mean that. I know. I know. The, I know. The, I know. The it's feeling. unfortunate because uh, that's just who I saw. I, I, it was on every TV I could imagine. Whenever the <laughs> Cowboys played, whether it was at a restaurant or at home, the Cowboys were on, and that's the right. only thing for the most part that everybody saw. So yeah. I grew up with, you know, being a Cowboy fan. And to this day, I still am a Cowboy fan. But it's been a friend. series of unfortunate events. There we go. <laughs> Man. Yeah, sorry, but, guys. No, sorry but, about having but we're still five-time Super Bowl players. champions, right? There we go. That, that's what I like to see. You know, one of my friends always likes to joke around. and, Hey, man, have you turned on the History Channel? You know, it. For the Dallas Cowboys, man, they, they, they back then, I kept talking about the five Super Bowl rings back, back in the, I don't even know when, History Channel. I'm like, look, at least we have a History Channel. Your team ain't got one ring or you know, whatever the case may be. But I mean, 
I don't know. I don't know when it will happen again. I don't know if it will happen again. But, but you know, it, and just to add to that point of, of football, like whoever wins this year, I mean, I strongly feel that it's going to have an asterisk due to COVID. You know. <laughs> it's been one of those years, has it not? Can I give you the trophy until it's thoroughly cleansed, or you know, whatever the case may be? But uh, <laughs> it's been tough, man. It's been tough, even even for them. Like I know people, I know they make probably more money than the average person, but it, you know, it's their job too. And and sometimes they get sick, or sometimes they get hurt, and and have you know injuries and stuff like that. And right, we we just we don't understand what they're going. They're going. They don't matter how much money you have everybody's going through something and everybody needs that hope and purpose. And that's what I love about this podcast, right? Because if you go look through, you know, the people who we've interviewed in the past, it's, it's just an array of different people yeah. from different aspects of life who all have what I think is one common goal is, is to bring good to people, uh, to be givers or to bring hope or, or to allow people to understand like, look, you're going to make mistakes and that's okay, but don't let that stop you. You know, continue yeah. going. You know, and that that's that's what I love about the podcast, you know. No, but it's cause it's cause it's cause uh, the main the main tagline is you got a story to tell. I want to hear it. There you <laughs> that's, go. that's what it there is, man. Go. Bottom line. I thought you were gonna say it's because you're on it, you know. <laughs> no, but it, or cause Scott's cause cause Scott Casey's listening. I already <laughs> told her. I'll be very honest, those 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 pages are pretty influential. Yeah. But oh. but man, like don't believe the hype all the time. I mean, like oh, yeah. it's it's just a lot of well, well, not just not just the high, but I think people forget like what it took to get there. I mean, who knows what these people had to sacrifice or give up? You know, one thing that I never told people this out loud, right? But but when I when I would hear people like when I was in class in law school, people would just tell me like that guy just he just gets it, he just understands it. Like it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, that guy that guy is not like me. I mean, he's just super smart. But they fail to understand this or, or to see, I should say is the amount of time and hours that I would put into trying to understand something. It's not just I read it once, baby, I got it. You know what I'm saying? No, it was a, I invested a lot into, into the, when people were out, you know, in, in, in events or, or just going out to dinner. I mean, I was at home studying through eating dinner or chips, whatever. I invested a lot to get me to that point. And it all goes back to what we've been saying. I believe our mindset can grow right the more that we allow it or the more that we build on that we're growing and we're growing so when people would look at me and say like man that guy just he just under he just knows it like i it it may have been that that i just knew it but it was because of the growth that i that i had to invest in and to be able to get to that point yeah and that's what i don't want to discourage people like people who want to seek you know graduate professions or a bachelor's degree or whatever it is it's really just about being diligent and investing your time into getting it done. You right. can get it done. I mean, I grew up poor, broke. I mean, you ever heard of a, a of a, an army brat? I was a Salvation Army brat. I mean, we moved from house to house growing up. I mean, we didn't have electricity at times. We didn't have water at times. That's the kind of mentality that I grew up around. But I, I decided one day that I wasn't going to let it define me. Another thing that I, I dislike people saying is, you know, I'm going to show them that I can do it because they don't believe that I can. That mindset to me was like, my foundation isn't on their negativity or their opinion on, on believing that I can do it. I base my foundation on, I know that I can. And that's the positive mindset that we had to have, that I had to have as a kid is, I know that I can do it. I'm not going to do it to prove you wrong. I'm going to do it because I know that I can, that I have the ability and tools in me to get me there. And, you know, I just want to encourage the, the, the students out there, or just anybody, really. We have to get out of this this real Grand Valley mindset. I mean, I think I think we're so kind of regressed in the sense of we don't know what's out there. I mean, the world is so the nation alone is huge. The world is so big. If we can be able to think big, we can get out of that mindset. And and like I said, you can do it. So on on that note, let me ask you this question. It sounds like you're a very, you're an individual who understands growth, understands a, a, a mindset that is beyond from where you're, where you're locally located. So are you, 
would you consider yourself culturally diverse? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely not. I mean, I, I think that <laughs> I think that's actually what played a role in, in, in you know in the mentality of where I was raised is we weren't. I mean, when I met my wife, she was she was culturally diverse. Okay. I mean, I, I, I think I think when, for example, just to give you an example, when it comes to food, like I wouldn't I wouldn't get out of McDonald's and Church's chicken. Like that's what I grew up on, <laughs> and everything else was just chips and munchies and ramen noodles and hot pockets. Like that's that was me. When I met my wife, man, she was so culturally diverse. When just in food alone, but there were certain things that I didn't want to try. Like, what are you eating? You know, and we'd go to restaurants, and I'm like, I guess I'll try it. And then slowly but surely, like I would be getting okay. This isn't too bad. Right. Like seafood was one of the things that I was just like, man, I grew up never eating seafood. I mean. Seafood is just generally a little more expensive than certain foods, right? And to this day, I, I still need sushi. Uh, the to the most that I eat. Wait, seafood. wait, wait! I, I was about to invite you to 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 uh, Kurai tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, mean, don't they, eat, you don't eat sushi. They have other thing other other than sushi. It was my understanding of, of Kurai, but no, I don't. I don't eat sushi. My wife does. She loves it. I can't get myself there. The only seafood that I really eat. Is is like tilapia or fried fish or fried shrimp, jumbo shrimp stuff like that. But uh, shrimp, shrimp, shrimp stew, shrimp salad, yeah. shrimp burger. Yes, yeah. It just depends. It depends on what's on it, I guess, right? Because uh, there's certain things that I, I just haven't been able to try that right. I wouldn't be comfortable with ordering a whole meal and not eat it. You know. So to answer your question, Ian, I think I'm more culturally diverse now that I was growing up. I mean, I've been able to travel some states now, uh, even just leaving school, like getting out of the valley. I mean, you begin to see things that you're just like, man, there's there's more there, there's more to life than just a real Grand Valley. Like, there's so much more that we can do if we just get out of this. I'm gonna be remain in, in in the valley, or I have this valley mindset because we're we're known as one of the uh, more non-economically friendly places in the entire nation. I mean, well, that, that's that's a fact. I mean, when you yeah. when what you're referencing is the Rio Grande Valley, Hidalgo County is the poorest county in the nation. Yeah, that's you know, I, I don't know if it's the poorest, but it's definitely up there. Was 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 my understanding. And and again, if we can just get out of that that mindset of, and we we just we just got to get a good job here and we'll be fine. Man go out there, experience the world, because you're going to see that there's just so much more that you can do with your own life. I mean, but, you can but, see, to- but see, like, okay, so let's go back. Let's, let's re- rewind a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Hidalgo County, the poorest County in, in the nation. And, and when we talk about, I don't know how old you are and I didn't do my research in that aspect. So I'm going to ask you right now, how old are you? I'm actually a, a, just turned, uh, not just turned, but I'm 28. I mean, I, was, <laughs> I wish I was a little younger. You know, back in the day, man, I was a good athlete. I was a runner. I was 28. 28. Wow. Now, uh, now, oh. now, I get, now I get out of bed and you don't hear noises like, you know, just trying to get off the couch or <laughs> on lights. Like, and my wife, like, we just, leaving this light on is electricity, man. we got to pay bills. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't know if you do it by choice, but, I mean, I, I feel good having being 37 and having this hair. I mean, just oh, for, that, men, just for awesome. men, help me out a little bit. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Having a full set of hair is definitely a blessing. I mean, I shaved mine just to get ahead. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't want to have that. People, you know, people could tell that you're balding phase. I said, you know what? I'm going to get in front of it. People are never going to know when it was. All I know is that I'm bald already. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All you got to do is just put on the glasses and be like, ew, Pitbull. And we're, we're good. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Pitbull listening. Out there you there go. 305. Um, but okay, let's go back. So I'm 37. I've lived my entire life in the Rio Grande Valley. Yeah. You're 28. I don't know if you've lived your entire life in the, in the Rio Grande Valley. Have you? For the most part, yes. I mean, there was pockets of, I mean, no more than a year. I mean, six months, maybe tops of living outside of, in different states. But, but here is is I grew up. This is this is what I call home. This is where I'm living now. And okay. So, so, he, so here's the question: In your 28 years of life, in my 37 years of life, why do we? Why are we in 2020 the poorest? And why do not? Why aren't we still not having, you know, a skyline, for example? 
What's your you know, opinion? It's your I, opinion. I, I was about to say, I, I don't know <laughs> that I can answer that, that question, really. What I do know is that I believe, I believe it's a mindset that has been kind of just here for, for generations and generations. I mean, it, it's no secret. We're right next to the, to the border. So we're predominantly Hispanic or Latino or, you know, whatever, whatever you want to label it. And, <laughs> and you know, our ancestors came here to, to really just make a living, right. you know, because country-wise, we're one of the wealthiest nations in the entire world. And I think I, the purpose of our ancestors, I believe, coming here is to set a foundation to grow from that. But I think we're... we're I mean, there, there's just so many things that, that I could say. <laughs> right. No, there's so many variables, that, obviously. That I, want, that I don't know that I want to say, right? But yeah, it, it, it's just a mentality. And, and I think with the right leadership, it may not be five years, 10 years from now, but we, we can begin to progress to, to get out of that. Um, I, I don't know that it has to be the real Grand Valley to be the poorest nation. I don't know that there has to be, I mean, the poorest nation, the poor, a poorest community. Um, I don't know that there has to be a poorest community, but I think we can get out of it. And, and, and as an idiot, it starts with you. It starts with us, right? It starts with you and me. It starts with, you know, our friends. We have to make a decision to say, you know, I'm, I don't have to live this way because that's the reality. Right. I mean, like I said, like, or like we said, even though we're the poorest community, guess what that means? That means there's other parts in, in the world or in the nation that are not which means we don't have to move to, to, to get there, but it means that we don't have to be poor. And we don't have to have this mentality or this mental state of this is where, this is where I have to be. Like I can grow from it. I can, I can move on past it. I hate, I hate to keep saying this word, but it, it, it's growth. I but mean, yeah. Grow. Yeah. So, so to add to that would be like, there's nowhere else to go, but up. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, I, I think you're exactly right. I mean, our mentality should be looking up because we, because we can do it. It's very possible to get us out of, of, of this mud or this rut. I mean, I, you know, when I became licensed, I sat down with my mom and I said, you know, mom, thank you. Thank you. Because I, I am not here without everything that you did in your life, everything that you invested in, everything that you sacrificed. Uh, she was a single mother of four growing up. You know, I said, I said, thank you, because you laid the foundation so that now with, with my son and my future kids, you we don't, don't have to, this, don't, yeah, you don't want to repeat the story. We're able, you know, so another thing that I, I know I say this a lot, but, you know, one, one thing that I don't agree with is when people kind of look down on other people who, whose parents, you know, got them, you know, a car or got them really nice things or are able to, to kind of get them to, to where they need to be, where we're struggling so much. I don't like looking down on those people because that, that should be every parent's goal. That should be every person's goal mm -hmm. is to be able to get to a place where our generation after us doesn't have to go through that anymore. My son no longer has to live in a world where we don't have electricity for a couple of days or where we have to borrow electricity from our, from our neighbors by attach, attaching an extension cord bringing it all the way to our home just so that we can have light. I'm thankful to my mom that she laid that foundation so that my son doesn't have to go through that or right. go through a day without any water or go through a day where all we eat is McDonald's or whatever. All of that's probably what he's going to is chicken nuggets. You know? <laughs> the, the McRib is back. I'm not going to lie to you. That's, <laughs> that stuff is bomb.com. No, man. I, I mean, like I said, I grew up on McDonald's. I still love it. Uh, my wife, for some reason, just, prefer something else but I, I i just have a question on mcdonald's though but like and when when i was growing up like why did they have crooks as characters they had the hamburglar like i wanted I a, the hamburglar yeah, yeah i wanted to be the hamburglar you know, I, I don't know and maybe that's what it is maybe it was just to get our attention like oh yeah i want to be that guy or i want to be ronald or you know, bring me that purple costume and put it on so I can be that other dude. I forget his name, but I forget his name too. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember that burglar and I was like, yo, man, like that guy is awesome. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I want to get all the burgers too, you know, or yeah. bring it all. So, uh, like I said, we should just focus on, on, on growing our, our, 
our, our own lives. And, and by doing that, it kind of enables us to, to be a blessing to other people around us. I mean, absolutely. Amen. You know, my wife has this thing in, in the house and, and I believe it's a quote by Mother Teresa. And I don't remember word for word, but it's something along the lines of if you want to change the world, start with your family. And that really means start with us. You know, it has to start, you know, and it has to start in my home. If I want to yeah. see change, I, I, I got to be better. Right. And, and as I get better and as I grow, the people around me get better. Right. Because you heard the saying, birds of a feather flock together. Now, who do you want to hang out with? Who do you want to be with? You want to be with eagles. I want to be with eagles, people who are soaring high in the sky and, and observing everything and, and being able to bring people up to the higher height. Or do you want to be above, you know, on the floor getting squished all the time? The decision is yours. Right? The decision is yours and mine. And, and the moment that we decide to take it, we start moving towards that growth and, and that's i believe that's the goal and hey, whatever it is in life you know whatever whether it's your job your career your education a relationship growth growth is growth is key absolutely now now going back to the whole thing about being poor being broke and so forth and, and that's you know that's just a, a fact <clears throat> it, it happens in almost every community yeah. but you know True words cannot be said that hold that hold this 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 information and have hold they hold these words actually and it's it takes a village to raise a child okay. and and that right there guys like I, I I mean those words right there in itself is is the value to our existence yeah us talking here today it's gonna go transcend to your fam, your family and friends. It's going to transcend to everybody who I had no connection to before. Yeah. And now you are creating that 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 flower, that that yeah. tree of connections. But you got to keep on watering them because okay. if you if you don't water them, they're going to die and they're going to wither. You know. But that doesn't mean that there's not beauty because even okay. in death, there's beauty. That's it. Yeah. You know when the when in fall. When when the trees change color, they're dying. Yeah, but it looks beautiful, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> it's a beautiful image. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you're exactly right. I mean, like I said before, I I don't I would not be here where I am in my life. Yeah, even as an attorney, as a father, as a husband, if it weren't for the people around me. I mean, you 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 you're exactly correct. I mean, it takes. Well, it took me a lot of it took me a lot of marriages to understand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and as long as you continue growing, I mean, it, like it, it goes back to that. It is yeah. you know, people around. I mean, just to put it in, in perspective, I mean, why or how it takes a community. My wife and I had a, had our, our son in 2019, right before the pandemic hit. So, right. what did that mean for us? And we didn't have help. And man, it it was a lot of lack of sleep. And I know you do, you go through that already, but it helps to have somebody to help you take care of the child, even for a couple of hours. Our son would hardly sleep, you know, in the, in the beginning stages of his life. And we hardly had time to shower. I mean, having somebody there, it, like you said before, it takes a village. I mean, it definitely helps you and it allows you to, to be able to do the things that you want to do. I mean, our time is invested in certain things and, and when we don't have that help or that community to do other things it doesn't allow us to grow you know it, it almost prevents us because we're so tied down with so many other things that we need that help to kind of carry us sometimes right you know and then like you said there's going to be it, 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 situations in life where you're uh, you don't expect them i mean they're unexpected there's going to be situations in life where maybe we make decisions that got us there but it's going to take somebody. It's going to take a friend, a family member, a community to get us out and to allow us to kind of put us back into position where we want to be to continue our goal in life of, of having that purpose and having that yeah. goal and continuing, really. You know, and all it takes is just five minutes to listen to somebody, to see, to understand where they're coming from. I think, I think one of the biggest things, two, two questions, Two things that that we can take away that I can present you right now is help me understand one, but then the second one, I'll come back to that one because it's it's floating in my mind somewhere right now. But 
right now, like if you if you are trying to understand individuals in, in their frame of minds, it take five minutes to understand, right. right? And then the second part out of all of this is just like, you know what, just make the relationships and have common sense because at the end of the day, that's number two, common sense should prevail in anything. Would you agree or disagree? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I think you're right. I mean, when it comes to to being or, or being able to understand somebody, I mean, I, I think I think it does take an ear, and and I, you know, people say this often, but we we have two ears and one mouth for a reason. Right. We were created to to listen and to hear more than we were to speak. And sometimes, look, you don't even have to understand a person. Sometimes just being there for them, knowing that they need somebody, at least understanding that through common sense is is enough yeah. you know, and, and can bring hope to somebody. You can bring that comfort that they need. Um, like, I mean, you're, like I said, you're right. I mean, it, it takes a village one, but being there for somebody and, and, and allowing us to use our common sense and, and being wise about certain decisions that we make, yeah. I mean, can help, can help a lot of people, including ourselves. Yeah, Rudy, it's been, it's been wonderful having this one hour conversation here with you. Uh, no, it's, we, it's, we, been, it's been a pleasure for me too, man. I'm like, like I, I think I said it off camera, but this is my first, po- my first podcast. So I was excited. I said, okay, you know, let me just look at my schedule and we can make it happen. So thank you again for the opportunity. How, how did it make you feel? I mean, uh, uh, let me, let me ask you this, uh, you know, like what, what were, what was your thought process on all of this? I mean, coming from a brand new attorney, I was a, <laughs> at least <since> yellow. <laughs> yeah, no, coming from a brand new attorney. I mean, I, I think, you know, you, so I thought if I can, if I can just help one person, I think you actually have this on something similar on your, on your Facebook page, but if, if you can just bring hope to one person or, or bring encouragement to at least one person, I said, you know, I'm going to do it. At the end of the day, look, I've been able to, I'm thankful that I've been able to develop, you know, certain, certain skills in my life that allows me to, to do things that, you know, maybe somebody else would not. I need to help. I need to kind of hold myself accountable and say, you know, I've been giving, I've been working on these gifts and been been able to give, the, been given the ability to, to grow these gifts. I got to use them, you know. And when it's on on a podcast or it's over the phone or it's on television or in a courtroom, I said, you know, I got to say yes because I I can bring hope to even one person. And if, well, if, if I, that I, happens, that's what it's about. I think we brought hope to you because now you have a decision to make. You got to choose a brand new NFL team Ah. and it cannot be the Dallas Cowboys, man. It's got to be somebody brand new. You know, who's your, that was your football team anyway. (laughs) (laughs) So don't come, don't come at me and say something like the Jets or something like that. Cause then then we have a whole different. (laughs) Man, if I had to choose, I'll, I'll go Baltimore Ravens with Lamar Jackson. I like I like what that kid brings. Yeah, yeah. I mean, very uh, talented and uh, young, young. These people, I mean, these these athletes are so young, you know. And it kind of kind of just brings back not not I don't want to say memories, but it kind of makes me wonder, you know, what can we be doing with our lives at that age, you know? And and for me, I was kind of like, I mean, I'm in a sense, a late bloomer. I mean, I started believing and in, in, that I could do things and kind of having a vision of, about life and a little, a little later than I would have thought, but had I done that at an early age, man, who knows, who knows where, where I would have been blessed to be, to be able to be. <laughs> You're 28 like, years old, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, 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 mean, I, I feel like, I feel like time flies by, man. And, and I, I tell this my wife all the time, like, man, 50 years is is short, like it goes by quick. And I want to be able to, to, to leave a legacy of, of hope to people. And, you know, time is going by quick. So I want to do that every chance I can, every chance I get. And and even, even with you here. So, 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 so going back to this, (laughs) if, if we're the proponents of change and it starts with us. Yeah. Will you ever make a move? To to from the Dallas Cowboys <laughs> <laughs> to help your community in the aspect of running for something. I personally have done so. 
Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't know what my career holds in that aspect of it. Um, I, I do know that in, in the near future, my goal is to be in private practice. Um, just yeah, to yeah. kind of give you a little understanding of, 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 of the audience of what that means. Right now, I'm working for the federal government. So that's what we consider public service, right? It's mm -hmm. Public practice, because we're not allowed to have our own clients and stuff like that, with very few exceptions uh, that don't apply to me. But my, my, my goal in the near future is to have, is, is to move into the private practice realm where I believe I'll be more in tune with the community, you know, uh, closer to home type of thing. Not that I can't do that now, but I think doing that, I'll be able to invest more time in the community. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's where, I, that's where it starts. I mean, I, like, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if people tell me that I should run in the future and people see me running in the future. And I'm like, right now I'm, 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 you're focused on I'm looking, your I'm looking at myself, yeah, <laughs> I'm looking yeah. at myself and I'm saying, I got to grow. Yeah. If that, if that's where, if that's where my goal is, if that's where that's where awesome. my vision is, I got to work on myself to get there, you know? And, and, and that's a great moment of reflection because, you know, oftentimes we see individuals that are like, well, let me do it. I want to do it. I want to do it. I want to do it. Not having yeah. a plan. Right. It, goes, yeah. it goes back to having a plan. If you have a plan, then you can communicate it and implement it more readily and available to everybody that your stakeholders so that you can guide it as yeah. opposed to, you know what, I'm going yeah. in cold feet. You're exactly right. And it's great that we're able to build this connection, you and I, because, hey, you just said you ran. So, hey, if that ever comes, <laughs> if that ever comes and it comes around, you know, I have somebody with experience here. So yeah. <laughs> that'll, be, that'll be helpful. I don't know how much help I could be, but but I, I'm, I'm always open. It's the, Rudy, it's been a pleasure. It's been a, a great time here with you and uh, hope to hope to hear from you soon. Again, uh, perhaps we can have uh, the serial tipper on on board sometime. But hey, there you go. <laughs> oh, she, would, she would definitely love that. I mean, it, again, it's, it's your podcast. So whenever you're whenever you're free, whenever you're ready, I mean, I'll, I'll let her know. Absolutely. And again, thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And we, I look forward to, to staying in touch with, in touch with you even after this podcast. Man. No, anything you need, just let us know. Hit us up. Uh, thank you once again. The Joe's About Podcast has been a great time with Mr. Rudy Reese, attorney at law. Thank you so much. Have a great one. Likewise.